You know what? I'm gonna do it. I've been procrastinating way too long. That last video I did about life of a collector, that gave me the final nudge that I needed to do it. Here it is. All the Arena Studio albums, from the very first one to the very last one. Yeah, and I'm gonna do the ranking, or at least I'm gonna try to do the ranking. We're Arena, and you're watching Live Proc. Hey there, welcome to Live Proc. I am Marcel, and I'm finally making the video that I have been postponing, procrastinating about, putting off for way too long. I had the idea weeks ago to do a ranking of Arena. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and then I started to listen to these albums and I was like, how am I going to rank them? I don't even, I can't even say what my favorite, my absolute favorite album by Arena is. I can't. So how am I going to rank them? Uh, Arena is an amazing band. Uh, I've been loving them for nearly 30 years, uh, which is interesting because next year in 2025 it is their 30th anniversary. So the band has a celebration, uh, which is pretty awesome. They're going on for so long and, and they got an amazing collection of music out there, uh, which, which each era has its charm. And, and with era I mean the singer. I mean, I, I kind of divide Arena into uh, the eras of the singers they had. I think each of us have their favorite and, and I'm of course curious, what is your favorite singer? Again, if you're gonna ask me what's my favorite singer, uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna find it very hard to say. Probably Rob Soden. I mean, I, I love his theatrics uh, and everything, but uh, each singer has its own charm and, and that's what I love about it. And that's again why I find it so hard to rank these albums. But my son gave me a very good idea how to do this video. He said, why don't you do a tier ranking? And I was like, what is a tier ranking? Well, that is this. And I was like, oh, it's interesting. That is not a top to bottom ranking, but it's more like uh, you have levels and you can put m different albums on the same level, which is interesting, of course. And well, A to D is probably self-explanatory, uh, but the S might, uh, if you're not familiar with this, might need a little bit expl explanation. That is the highest ranking. And the S stands for super or special, you know, an album where you have a, a really deep uh, special connection with. And I'm gonna turn the table, well, the stack around. And of course, I'm going to start uh, with the very first one with Songs from the Lion's Cage. Uh, and the vocalist on this one, again, I'm not gonna mention all the band members, just the vocalist, John Carson. This was the very first Arena album. This was the moment like, wow, uh, I, I, I just, uh, this came out in 95, so it's also coming up the 30 year. Uh, and, and when it came out, uh, I had just discovered progressive rock. Uh, I knew Clive Nolan, I knew Shadowland, I loved Shadowland, I knew he was also in Pendragon, I really enjoyed Pendragon as, uh, as well. Uh, so I, I kind of loved that music and then I heard that he was going to be doing an, a project, an album, with the former drummer of Marillion, Mick Pointer. And I was like, hey man, Marillion was the band that got me into progressive rock, so that's an interesting combination, I gotta check it out. And I was in a record store, remember those? Uh, and, and I saw it there and I saw it, I was like, oh man, and I listened to the album there and I was like, wow, this sounds, this sounds really good, really interesting. It's different from what Clive did with, with Shadowland, different what he does with Pendragon. Yeah, this, I, I kind of enjoyed it. So that was my very first time uh, discovering, well, the music of Arena and I've been following the band ever since. Uh, I've been a member of the fan club as well for a couple of years. Um, so, you know, I had gradations in, in being following the band. I've also been away from Prague for a couple of years and I didn't follow any Prague, so not even Arena, despite the fact that they're my favorite Prague band, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, the past is the past. We're gonna look forward. So um, yeah, this is an, an incredible album. Um, I'll, I'll mention it. I mean, I, it's kind of obligatory like on the set list, Solomon. Uh, but there are so many more amazing songs in it, but for some reason Solomon remains this uh, epic, fantastic song, but also the whole crying for help thing is really fantastic. So I'm going to rank this one an A because it is a special album. It is one of my favorite albums, but it is not the album that gives me a real deep connection. So we'll see if we can uh, have any albums on the S tier. Now, interestingly, John Carson only did one album with Arena because on the next one, Pride, uh, we have Paul Wrightson as a singer. And as you can see by the artwork, it, it, it kind of is the same vein, same atmosphere, also musically. And also, I mean, you have the crying for help 
the parts that here, they continue them there. And, and there's, there's, yeah, there are similarities between the albums. And yet, this is one of my least played arena albums. I'm, I'm serious, this is one of my least played arena albums. But despite the fact that when I put it on, I was like, I should play it more because it is in fact an amazing album. I mean, Arena doesn't have any bad albums and I'm, I'm, not, subject, uh, I'm not objective here. I'm very much biased. Um, I don't think they have any bad albums. Despite that, this is my least played album, uh, despite the fact that this also has the crying for help uh, uh, parts in it. Uh, and interestingly, um, with here we have the epic track Solomon, with here we have the epic track Sirens, yet Sirens never attained that classic status as Solomon did for some reason, because everybody wants to hear Solomon on a show, but I don't think every, everybody will say the same about Sirens, despite the fact that it is also a great track. Uh, so given the fact that it's in my least played album, I'm gonna give this a C ranking. This is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Of course, you know, th those are my rankings. Uh, if you have your rankings, let me know in the comments what you think of my rankings uh, and, and if you agree or not agree with them uh, and, and how you would rank them. I'm, I'm curious, of course, uh, how you would do that. So feel free to leave it in the comments as long as you keep it civil, of course. Now, there's another interesting thing. The third album by Arena, The Visitor, again with Paul Wrightson on vocals, but as you can see from the artwork, it's a completely different atmosphere, different mood. It's more dark, more ominous. Uh, I gotta say, I, I, I really dig this, this artwork. Um, yeah, very much. Uh, but this is such an amazing album. This is absolutely a classic. This is, I think there are a lot of people that are gonna mention The Visitor as their favorite uh, arena album. Maybe there are a lot of people to say this is the best arena album. It is absolutely a stunning album. I'm not going to go too deep in them because, again, we'll be sitting here for hours. But, um, yeah, this is definitely an A rating for me. And it's interesting that it's the same vocalist, but it's a completely different album, completely different mood uh, than Pride. So you see the, the difference in it. And this is an album I really play a lot. So, yeah, this is definitely an A rating. Now, we had one album with John Carson, two with Paul Wrightson, and then we have another change. Here we have another era starting with Arena with... Immortal, and again, you know, the artwork, the glutton, that, that, that artwork is, I don't know, it, it, it I would almost say mesmerizing. It, it's weird, it's strange, but it's captivating at the same time. But uh, this is the first album with singer Rob Soden, and the first time I heard this album, the first song chosen, when it started, it's like, oh man, yeah. I really love that. I really love that part. It's heavy, it, it, it's theatrical, uh, it's dark, it's, it's yeah, I'm, I'm loving this very much. Uh, and, and that's just the first track. I didn't even mention The Butterfly Man, which is also this, this amazing track. Movie Drone, the 20 minute, minute epic, which is fantastic. I love it very much. But also these really touching ballads like Waiting for the Flood or Friday's Dream. Those songs as well, that shows a little bit of, of how Rob uh, sings on the album and, and, and also, you know, this is also the first time I started to see Arena live. I don't think I've seen them in the Visitor era. I've never seen them with Paul Wrightson. I've only seen them with Rob Soden, uh, with Paul Manzi and with uh, Damien Wilson. Um, yeah, and, and, and that was really amazing. Also, my wife loved this one very much and she went along with me to the concerts and she became a fan of Arena as well. So, yeah, this is a very special album for, for the both of us. So, yes, this is the first... S tier ranking, Immortal, the fourth Arena album. Now, then we come to Contagion. Uh, and Contagion is again like The Visitor, is this, this concept piece, uh, which is, is, it's a fabulous album. It's a stunning album. Again, I love it very much. What they did here uh, was they added uh, some EPs with additional tracks that did not fit the main album, but still lyrically, thematically, and musically fit the whole thing. Uh, as you can see, I'm missing one. Uh, I, I when, it, when they came out, I got one, and for some reason I never got the other one, and I'll probably never will, because I really think they're very hard to get. It's this Digi pack, which is kind of a shame, because it's, well, it's not as in great shape anymore, because I used to play this album quite a bit. I haven't played it as much ever since. This is not one of my most played albums, but this is definitely a really good one. Uh, so I'm gonna give this a B ranking. Yeah, then, then an album that uh, I, I also had some mixed feelings about, Pepper's Ghost. Uh, this is the last 
third and last album with Rob Soden. Uh, um, one of the tracks that I really love about this one is Opera Fanatica, uh, because again, theatrical, grand, and, and you know, I love it what Clive does there. Um, my favorite track on this one are, is The Eyes of Lara Moon. Whenever I hear that song, it's give me Give me goosebumps. I really love that very much. Um, yeah, and, and, and the one track that, that I, I kind of had mixed emotions was with Bedlam Fair for some reason. But after hearing that track a couple of times in live shows, I really warmed up to him. And I gotta be honest, right now I actually do love that track. So this is really a, a great album. I don't play it that much. Um, so I'm gonna give this one a B rating. All right, we had three different eras. The fourth era of Arena with Paul Manzi, The Seventh Degree of Separation. And, and I got a little story about this one. The very first time I heard it was uh, before it came out. I had the good fortune to have Clive Nolan as my guest here at my house with a few others like Agnieszka Suita, Mark Westwood. Uh, and because I had organized a fundraiser for, I believe it was She or Alchemy, I'm not sure again, but for one of Clive's uh, um, uh, musicals. And uh, so they, they came over here, they stayed at my house, and the night before the show, uh, we, we were sitting in our living room, and all of a sudden Clive said, hey man, do you want to hear the new album? Uh, I have it on my iPad, and you can listen to it if you like, and I was like, yeah, of course I do. So we hooked up the iPad to my stereo, and he played The Seven Degree of Separation. It was the very first time, and I do remember, I mean, my kids were, were young back then, and they're, they're, there's twice the F word on the album, and he was like, yeah, there's some profanity on the album, so and I was like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll manage. Uh, but we, we heard the album for the very first time, and it was like, wow, it was so amazing. Uh, and that's why this album, for, for well, ever since, became uh, one of my favorite albums, uh, one of my most played albums uh, as well, because I, I just loved it. There's so much in it. Uh, Paul Manz is an amazing singer. He's a great guy. And uh, yeah, what, what he, what, this album is, is, for me, is one of the best that Arena has released. So this is definitely an S-tier album. A little confession and, and, and something I have been saying to uh, a lot before, but I, I think it's important, you know, to put it in as an explanation. Um, some of these albums I've been listening to for nearly 30 years. Uh, other albums I have been listening to for less than a year because um, after this album was released, I kind of stepped out of the prog world and, and left everything behind me. Uh, and then I stayed away for uh, uh, several years. And then about two years ago, I, I, you know, prog started to come back into my life. I started to enjoy it again. And well, now I'm back. But I missed out a lot of music in these years. And I also missed out several Arena albums. So last year, October, Arena played here in the Netherlands, in Helmond, close to where I live. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna see them. I, I, it's been so many years, I'm, I gotta see them. So I went there, uh, well, it was the first show I saw with Damien Wilson as singer, I knew he was the vocalist. So um, yeah, it was, was an amazing uh, show. I, I loved it very much. And of course I raided the merch stand and I bought all the albums that I didn't have. So these are the albums that I haven't been listening to for that long, like this one, uh, Double Vision, with this kind of weird cover. I, 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 I don't know, I found it a weird cover, uh, but the music on it is really good. Um, uh, again, with Paul Manzi uh, on vocals, and, and there's a lot of great songs on it. I love the opening track, Chivago Wolf. I love Paradise of Thieves. It's just, oh, it's a beautiful song. Uh, the Legend of Elijah Shade, again, you know, another big epic track. Um, so despite the fact that the cover is not that great, um, yeah, I, I, I really do love the album, uh, despite the fact that I haven't played it that much. So this is going to be a B tier for me. Then the last one with uh, Paul Manzi, um, The Unquiet Sky. And it was interesting because a couple of weeks ago, uh, Arena played a show in the Netherlands, in the south of the Netherlands, uh, the famous show where Mark Bogert uh, stepped in for uh, John Mitchell because John Mitchell had other uh, obligations too. Uh, and and uh, Clive had a layover here in, in my hometown, Eindhoven. He was at the airport and, and I heard about it and I texted him, it's like, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna jump in my car and I'm gonna drive over there. And we got together, we had a cup of coffee, we had a chat, it was fun. We talked about my ranking of the Pendragon albums uh, video that I did, and I said that I was gonna do a arena ranking video. And he was like, yeah, he was curious to see it. So Clive, if you're watching, 
is finally here. I'm curious what you think about my ranking, of course. Um, but anyway, um, we, we talked also about this album, The Unquiet Sky, and he mentioned that uh, he thought that if the album had different artwork, this one could have been just as big as The Visitor. And I was like, yeah, musically, it, it's dark, it's ominous. Uh, it has a real amazing atmosphere in it. I love the title track. I really do love it. But the entire album is really good. So I was wondering, you know, would that be true? Would, if it's, is it the artwork that's holding this album back from becoming a bigger album or not? What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Uh, I, th I think it's an amazing album. Uh, and I kind of love it slightly more than uh, Double Vision. So I'm going to give this an actual A listing, an A tier ranking. The final one. Yeah, the theory of molecular inheritance. It's, it's a tongue breaker, uh, this one. The first album with Damien Wilson. And again, a new era, a new, well, a new chapter for Arena. Uh, and I know that there's, there's a lot of controversy, a lot of discussions about this album, but, but mostly because of the fact that Damien is now the vocalist for Arena. Uh, I have been reading things like that. People say that it's, Arena has become the Damien Wilson band. And in a way, I understand that because Damien has a really distinct, really recognizable voice and he has done so many things. He has sung with so many bands and projects and, and wow, that, that's, that's really incredible. So that's why I understand that, that maybe people find it a little bit difficult to see him as the new singer of Arena. Um, what I found interesting is that Clive said that it has always been his intent to get Damien as the singer of Arena when they started out. I can't help but wonder, well, I don't have to wonder. I mean, if you hear um, songs from the Lion's Cage songs sung by Damien, you get an idea of how that would have sounded. Um, so we still have that a little bit, of course, but it's, it's different. Um, but still, you know, I, I picked this up last October at the show uh, and I have been playing this album a lot because I, I really wanted to hear how the new material sounded. I mean, I was, it was really great to hear Damien sing the old songs and I gotta say, he really did a great job on that. Um, you can hear that, of course, with the Lifeian, the uh, live CD that they got out from the tour. Yes, I bought that one as well. Um, but I've been listening to this album a lot and despite the fact that, yes, it is Damien, yes, he has this, this voice that stands out above everything else. At the same time, this is definitely an arena album. I really hear the classic arena elements that I find in the other albums. I also hear it in this one and I'm really enjoying this one. I'm really loving it. So this one gets an A tier ranking for me. Uh, yeah, because I think it is really that great. So there you have it, my tier ranking of the Arena albums. And I gotta say this, this was a much better way to do it. Uh, and I thought it was a lot of fun going through all these albums and, and, and talking about them. And then there's so much more to tell about them, but the video is gonna be too long. And I, I still had some more because I still have some live albums. I also have some fan club albums, um, but I, I didn't include them as well because, well, like I said, otherwise it's going to be too long. Uh, I enjoy doing this. I hope you enjoyed it too. And of course, I, I'm, I'm curious, how do you feel about my ranking? What, what, what do you think about it? Do you agree with it or do you have a different ranking? Let me know in the comments what your ranking is and, and what arena means to you. That, that's what I like to know. What does arena mean to you? Let me know in the comments. I look forward to reading that. So uh, that's it. Another ranking video done. Um, if you want more ranking videos like this, uh, let me know in the comments and, 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 and give me suggestions. Give me suggestions. What, what band would you like me to rank? And, and I'll see if I can do it. I mean, I have a modest collection, so I might not have all the albums of a, of a, a certain band. So, um, but I could, I could at least try. So uh, you never know what we're gonna do. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying these kind of videos. So, um, well, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.